Hi everybody, Allie here from ABC Bead Supply and I'm here today with a tutorial for you on how to make a bracelet using um, stretchy cord. These are a lot of fun. We've had a lot of requests for a tutorial on how to make these in the sizing, so here it goes. Um, here are four different samples of bracelets uh, that I made up just to give you some ideas. Um, this one uses all 12 millimeter beads, an assortment of uh, designs and styles with one of our lip charms. These enamel lip charms are awesome because they're double-sided enamel, which is really fun for a bracelet. Um, and this is the bracelet that I'm going to show you how to how to make from start to finish in just a minute. Um, then we have this one using 12 millimeter beads, but then also our specialty little uh, fun shimmer heart beads, so fun for Valentine's. Um, and then the Hug Me charm with the purple version of those shimmer heart beads, so lots of fun. And both of these are just looks at taking a monochromatic look, uh, mixing up um, all the beads, different bead styles in the same shade to match the charm, which is a fun look. This one combines uh, the red and the pink different colors and some prints and things like that um, we also you can also do eight millimeter uh, bracelets this is the smaller eight millimeter beads the eight millimeter beads don't come in nearly as many fun styles so you don't get the prints or the tinsel or anything like that but we do have solids and pearls um, and a couple of iridescent options in the eight millimeter um, and the smaller charms work great for this. So this is the dainty key, um, heart key charm, uh, which just pairs really sweet with the smaller beads. Um, okay, so let's, well, I'm gonna set these aside for now and we're gonna go to this bracelet first. As far as sizing goes, here's a look at the chart we use. Um, so we're looking at the 12 millimeter sizes right now. Keep in mind that everybody has completely different preferences and how they want their bracelets to fit. So um, this is a ballpark only, um, but this is what we use as our as our rule of thumb. So child, we've got 14 beads, tween, 15, adult A, 16, adult B, 17, and adult C, 18. That's how we label them. Um, your adult's brace uh, wrist sizes are just, they're obviously different from person to person. So there's gonna be a lot of range there. Um, how kids like them and how you want, them to be fit it is also very different. Um, I will say that for kids, it really is better for them to not be too large because they tend to play with the sensory thing. They can tend to play and pull at them and snap at them. So you don't want them too tight, but um, if they fit comfortably on the wrist without having too much of um, a, of a bangle, um, that's definitely better for kids for them to hold up and not get lost and not lose their shape. Um, Adults, though, sometimes like to have a little bit more of a bangle look. So um, definitely this is going to fluctuate based on preference and is just a general guide. Um, okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of the stretchy elastic. Um, we have two rolls of the one millimeter stretchy elastic beading cord. You can get a smaller four meter roll or a large 100 meter roll. Um, we have found that one millimeter elastic is just really a great in between um, uh, stretchy cord option. There's several diameters out there. We only carry the one because it just really works for everything. Um, the 12 millimeter beader, beads fit with it, eight millimeter beads fit with it, and even the seed beads fit on it. Um, the smaller that you get in elastic diameter, so if you go down, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.5, um, the more stretch it has, but the easier it is going to be to break and to lose its shape. The thicker that you get past the one millimeter, um, the less stretch that it has, um, but you're gonna keep that shape and retain um, the look of the bracelet more. So one millimeter is just a really nice in between from those different um, from those different places. So uh, once you cut your piece of one millimeter cord, you're just gonna pre-stretch it. And it's really important that you don't skip this step. It's a step that a lot of people miss, but if you don't pre-stretch your cord, um, your bracelet is gonna lose its shape after just a couple of wears, and you're gonna end up having gaps. So um, for example, this would be how it just looks, not pulling at it. Um, so you wanna make sure you pre-stretch that cord so that you don't have that shape getting lost. Um, and then you're gonna start adding on your beads. Thank you. 
And I'm gonna go halfway. So since I'm putting 14 beads on this bracelet, I'm gonna do seven. Um, and then we've got our charm. So I'm gonna take the charm and a six millimeter jump ring. And then I'm gonna take my split, um, split jump ring pliers. And you're gonna open up these pliers and just put that little prong, squeeze it right in between to open up the jump ring. And then you're gonna take your pointer finger and you're just gonna push that ring forward to really open that up. If you try to put it on while it's still in this horizontal direction, um, it's still gonna be difficult to get in there. So you wanna push it up to that vertical direction to really expand that gap in the split ring. And then at that point, you can add your charm. Now, all you're gonna do at this point is just get it onto that ring. Then you're gonna take your flat pliers and just twist that in place to twist it shut, okay? So I've heard um, multiple customers just struggling to get jump rings on, and that's the ticket. Um, you wanna be using your pliers and let them doing the work and not trying to use your fingers to get those on. Um, as far as sizing on jump rings, we have six millimeter, eight millimeter, and 10 millimeter. I use different size jump rings for different projects. Um, I almost always try to use six millimeter and only go up if I need the drop, if I need the charm to be longer, to get it out of the way from whatever it's hanging on, or if the um, the hook on the charm is too thick to get that six millimeter around. Um, so, because you don't want, just for aesthetics, you don't want extra jump ring when you don't need it. Um, so stay smaller and then work up when you need to for drop or for sizing. And what I mean by drop is, um, there's not really a good example that I have over here with the hearts, but say for, for instance, this heart charm, say that these ends of the heart came up a lot more and the um, eye hook was in deeper, you would need a longer jump ring to protrude up over um, to be able to get that hang. So these charms all are fine with a six millimeter jump ring. And you again, if you can avoid having less hang, you're gonna want to. So um, there is a, pl a place and a purpose for all of the sizes of jump ring. Um, start small, work your way up as needed. Um, okay, so then we're gonna add that and then we're gonna put the rest of our beads on. Once you have all of the beads on, you're gonna just take your bracelet and you're going to tie in a knot. And then what you wanna make sure you're doing here is just really pulling snug on this first initial knot. If you aren't pulling, again, you're gonna have a bracelet that loses its shape quickly. If you just knot it here without pulling that tight over to a couple of wears, you're gonna get those gaps. So when you're tying off the preparing the cord in the first place and then the way that you tie it off is what's gonna ensure that your bracelet doesn't lose its stretch. Once you get that first knot in there, you're just gonna go through with a second knot. After you tie that second knot, you're gonna test the bracelet and make sure that things aren't sliding around. If the knot starts to slide on you, you're gonna start over. So by sliding, I don't mean stretching. I mean, if this knot physically slides down, you've got a bad knot. So you gotta start from, just start over on that. So you're gonna test that. As long as that knot holds in place and isn't moving, then you can go through and do that third. And then I just check it all again. So lots of check, double checking yourself as you go through that. Um, then I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna trim the ends of that. You don't wanna to get too close so that you're cutting the knot, but you don't want it to be too long that you can see it or feel it on the bracelet. So just a tiny little bit of tail left. And then this is um, Hypo Cement. You can get it at craft stores, you can get it on Amazon. We do not carry it. Um, and you're gonna just put a little dab of that right over top of the knot and let it dry and that helps secure that knot just in case anything should happen with it. Okay, so that's that bracelet. This is your a standard 12 millimeter bracelet. Let's go back to sizing for just a minute. On these two bracelets, um, we have these heart beads on here and the heart beads are um, smaller, a little bit smaller 
Um, so we've added 15 beads of the 12 millimeter, or I'm sorry, 15 beads total um, instead of 14, just to account for the millimeter sizing on these hearts being a little bit smaller. The other thing to keep in mind is that rhinestone 12 millimeter beads are slightly smaller too. So if you put more than two rhinestones on a bracelet, you're gonna need to add an extra bead overall just because that diameter is different. Um, the rhinestones, the way that they're made, um, your 12 millimeter sizing is on the side here because you can't put, since rhinestones can't be glued obviously onto the top where there's a hole, that shaves off a little bit of size on both the top and the bottom of that bead, making it the um, this portion of the bracelet what creates the diameter um, to be a little smaller. So those are two things to keep in mind with sizing on 12 millimeter and adding specialty beads. Um, for eight millimeter, here is what we have down as what we use for sizing on this. Uh, 21 for child, 23 for tween, 25 for the first adult. So those ones have larger jumps. And then for the a larger adult size just adding one um so smaller grad um a smaller gradient on the um the adult sizes because they're already going to be just a hair bigger um with these initial sizing um being two eight millimeter beads two eight millimeter beads is 16 millimeters instead of 12 so there's already just a little bit of a difference um on those seed beads are the only bracelets that we measure by inches. Um, so let me show you, let's do a seed bead bracelet first and then I will show you why. We have these awesome seed bead grab bags. They are in amazing value. Um, and let's just take one of the packets of, they come with an assortment of, gosh, I don't even remember how many it is. I think it's 15, is it 15? Five, yeah, there's 15 different seed beads in one package. Um, and each one is going to be enough for a bracelet. So it's 15 bracelets in a bag. And I can't remember the price off the top of my head. I want to say they're something is crazy. It's like $6.95. These are an insane deal. Um, so these are available on the site. You can get 15 bracelets for right around $6.95. Killer deal. Um, I'm going to take these out to make the sample with. Um, I'm just going to pour them in here. I love mixing a bunch of colors of seed beads right on one bracelet. It's so fun. It's um, the one color, different shades, monochromatic look. So you're going to pre-stretch that um, cord again. Just like that. Get all of that extra stretch out. And then we're going to start beading. When you get close to what you think you have for the right um, the right length, just gonna pull out a ruler and see where you're at. So, oh my goodness, it's like I've done this a million times. <laughs> We're right at six inches in length. So I'm gonna go ahead and be done with um, this as a child size bracelet. Um, so same thing, you're gonna take it and you're going to Pull that just nice and snug, get that first initial knot in, make the second one. It's really important that you, when you tie that second one, you make sure you're not going over a bead. Those smaller beads can be trickier. I'm gonna double check, make sure that that knot doesn't slip and that the cord doesn't shift or stretch at all. Looks like it held its shape good. So I'm gonna go back through and do another. Double check it again, make sure that it's not stretching, losing any shape. And then we will trim that. And we'll pretend that I added a dab of glue because I want to show you some things on this and I don't want it wet. So the reason that you can measure the seed bead bracelets over the 12 millimeters is, um, I mean, you could measure the 12, you could measure the 12, but counting them is just easier because they're bigger, but it would be a different measurement. You can't string, so let's do this. Let's take a, another piece of cord and let's add 14 beads to this cord, just to show you something here. So if you have, um, 
14 beads on this 12 it is measuring at six and over a quarter instead of six inches so there the the length of a six inch seed bead bracelet does not fit the same as the length of what would be a six inch 12 millimeter bracelet you'd have to take off one of those beads to make that six and it would fit this much different so the reason for that is because of the um the the millimeter the total millimeter size of the bead when you've got a 12 millimeter bead your your hole is in the middle you've got six millimeters on either side so your the what's actually taking up that inner circumference of the bracelet is six millimeters seed beads are about four millimeters four millimeters um so it just you've got a very different sizing it the length is just the total bead strand size it's not taking into account um, the distance from the hole to the outside of that bead that's creating that overall circumference of a bracelet so if I were to tie this off just to show you measurement wise when you're looking in that in inside circle the inside circle the inner circumference of the 12 millimeter and the seed bead are the same even though the measurement of it is a quarter inch difference so um and then you you take eight millimeters into play too and you've got yet a different um a different uh, millimeter size a different circumference that you're working with so that is why the sizing it doesn't all just go off of inches um, because it can't when you're using different size beads. Okay, so th I'll put this um, this chart right in the inspiration station underneath the video so that you have it um, and don't have to freeze the video to write it all down. But I hope that hope I hope that better explains for you how to get to the sizing that you want for bracelets. Um, and you know if you find that these numbers don't work perfectly for you, you can tweak them. But this is um, you know, just, just keep in mind what I explained about measuring with inches that really only works for, um, the seed beads. Um, you could measure the 12 and the 18. It's just easier to count them, but you'd have different measurements for these than you would for the seed beads because of the circumference difference. So I hope that better explains things for you. and didn't confuse you more. Um, cause bracelet sizing can be tricky and it can take a little bit of work. So hopefully that takes and saves you some time figuring it all out. Um, the recipes and the supplies to duplicate all these uh, bracelets will be also posted right in the Inspiration Station. The Inspiration Station on our website is awesome. You can just we put a photo, uh, an actual photo of all of these samples along with um, clickable shopping links um, for all of the supplies used so that it's really easy to duplicate them on your own.